guys, Mr. Klein here, and I am at the Morganza Floodway, which is a couple miles to the northwest of, you guessed it, Morganza, Louisiana. Now, at the time of this recording, the Army Corps of Engineers has just decided that they're going to be opening the spillway on the, June the 2nd in order to relieve the flooding of what's going on. Now, there's a whole lot of restrictions here right now, and so I don't want to break the law and spend time in jail. So, what I've done is I've recorded myself driving across a whole bunch of times uh, in order to show you what the flooding looks like on one side or the other. And what we're going to do here is we're going to explain the whole purpose of this structure as well as the operations and some of the consequences both here in Morganza and downriver, even as far south as the Gulf of Mexico. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Sorry, Mr. Klein in the past, future Mr. Klein here. First off, Recording next to a highway is terrible, so that's why, Ms. past Mr. Klein, you need a better microphone. Second of all, I know past Mr. Klein just said that the Morganza Spillway was supposed to open on June 2nd. Now, as you probably know now that the video has been released, the Morganza Spillway opening has been delayed not once, not twice, but a third time as of June the 6th indefinitely. The reason being is that the conditions for its opening did not occur. So as far as they're concerned, based on the river forecast, that isn't going to happen. So for the rest of the video, keep this in mind that as past Mr. Klein is talking about it, he's assuming that the Morganza Spillway would be opened. So even if you're watching this at a later date where the Morganza Spillway opens or something like that, the effects and stuff that will be discussed later on in the video are actually ones that would occur if the Morganza Spillway would open. And also, right before the end of the video, future Mr. Klein, me that is, is gonna interrupt past Mr. Klein and actually explain why the Morganza Spillway wasn't open. Okay, past Mr. The Spillway was constructed as a response to the Great Mississippi River Flood in 1927. And over 70,000 square kilometers were covered with water, kind of like this, up to depths of nine meters or 30 feet. Over half a million people were displaced and the total cost of property damage and crop losses and damages to the levees were over $1 trillion in 2019 money. The consequences of the 1927 flood were enormous. Fortunes were lost by farmers. It accelerated the great migration of African Americans moving from this region on upward to the industrial centers of the north. And for the purposes of this video, it also ruined the strategy held by the Army Corps of Engineers that the Mississippi River's flooding could just be controlled by levees like what we're standing here. What was needed was a new strategy. The multiple levee failures showed that perhaps the best way to control large floods was to give the river the ability to release some of its water into lowlands on the opposite sides of the levee in order to lower the river's level and utilize the natural drainage basin in the Mississippi River. The Flood Control Act of 1928 ordered the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to identify areas along the Mississippi River where water could be released to deliberately flood land to lower the water levels in order to save the levees from being having crevasses. The first was Birds Point, New Madrid. It was an area in southern Missouri just south of the confluence of the Mississippi and Ohio rivers. The next one is one place you might have heard of, which is Bonnet Carey, which is a location about 50 kilometers upriver of New Orleans adjacent to Lake Pontchartrain that was the site of several levee crevasses during floods in the 1800s. And the final one was here at Morganza. It's a location north of Baton Rouge along the Mississippi River floodplain that comes close to the Atchafalaya River. It was the site in the 1800s of over eight levee crevasses during this time. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers realized that the Atchafalaya Basin could be a huge safety valve for the Mississippi River. And by diverting floodwaters from here into the Atchafalaya Basin, they could drop river levels much lower than they could by simply just using Bonnet Carey Spillway or New Madrid, which only serves as a detour for the Mississippi River. The Army Corps of Engineers recognized the value of the Atchafalaya Basin at this spot. Instead of these waters heading down to New Orleans and possibly breaking levees and ruining the city, by diverting all of these waters through the Atchafalaya Basin, they had a separate outlet that they could head to the Gulf of Mexico. Also, because the Atchafalaya Basin is, of course, much bigger than Lake Pontchartrain, it allowed the Army Corps of Engineers to divert a lot more of these floodwaters than they would down Bonnet Carey. In fact, over 600,000 cubic feet per second can actually flow through Morganza Spillway in a worst-case scenario. 
Construction began in the late 1930s and the spillway was completed in 1954. The structure contains 125 openings that can release almost 17,000 cubic meters per second or 600,000 cubic feet per second of water when fully open or half of the flow of the Mississippi River at this location in a worst case scenario. The gates are open one at a time in order to allow the appropriate amount of water to go through here and head toward the Atchafalaya Basin. From there, the water heads southward through the basin where it reaches the Gulf of Mexico through the Atchafalaya River itself south of Morgan City or through the Wax Lake Outlet, which was an outlet dug in the 1940s in order to facilitate these floodwaters from heading toward the Gulf of Mexico. The spillway first opened in 1973 during the big Mississippi River flood then. It was opened as an emergency because the low sill structure at Old River Control was actually in danger of collapsing and causing the Mississippi River to change its course to go down to the Atchafalaya Basin. They opened 42 of the 125 gates in order to allow water to go into the Atchafalaya Basin. The result of which was that Old River Control was saved and the Mississippi River dropped this way heading toward New Orleans, but the consequence was that Morgan City was severely flooded as a result of this. The spillway opened again in 2011, not because of any sort of emergency at Old River Control or Bonnet Carry or anything else like that, but rather it was a way to manage the waters like it how it is in 2019 in order to prevent something similar to what happened in 1973 from occurring again. This time, only 18 gates were open and flooding in the basin was less as a result. In contrast to the caution presented by the Corps of Engineers about a possible inundation of vast areas of land with over six meters or 20 feet of water in the worst case scenario. And I can tell you that I was teaching in St. Mary Parish at the time and it was the end of the school year when they decided to open up the gates and as a result, they sent us home early for the school year because of the danger that was possible for the flooding in Morgan City. I'm in Berwick and this is a seawall that is designed to protect the city from the Atchafalaya River. As you can see by the leakage, the water's already so high and they've had to close the gates as a precaution. What's going to happen is eventually all this water is going to come downstream and come up here and the river levels that are already high in that flood stage are going to be raised even higher, putting more stress on these seawalls. Now the walls themselves were designed in response to the 1973 floods, so they're, the cities aren't in danger of immediate levee failure. But for communities outside of these walls, there's the threat of a phenomenon of what we call as backwater flood because what's happening is all this water is making its way to the Gulf along with all the other bayous and places like that that feed into the marsh. So what's occurring is all this Atchafalaya River water is filling up the marsh and as a result the bayous that would normally just flow right in their water is being backed up. In fact the St. Mary Parish government on a bayou just to the east of here finished sinking a movable barge in order to limit backwater flooding for communities on the other side of the levee. There's about 6,000 people total who live in inside the Morganza floodway. Half of them live within levee protected towns that are Crot Springs, Melville, and Simsport. The other half of the population live in areas like here, which is Butte La Rose, completely unprotected from the floodwaters of Morganza. People who live out here just have to rely on their houses being elevated in order to wait out the floodwaters. Tens of thousands of acres of crops will be flooded and washed away, and thousands of cattle that normally graze fields in the basins will have to be moved to higher ground. In addition, wildlife, including white-tailed deer and the Louisiana black bear, are at risk from dying from being unable to escape from the floodwaters. The Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries reports that after the opening of the spillway in 2011, about 30% of the total population population of white-tailed deer that lived in the Atchafalaya Basin died as a result of the flooding. I went and I looked online about the Louisiana black bear population and the effect on it and I couldn't find any real hard data. I found a couple of conflicting data points. So fingers crossed that uh, the Louisiana black bear whose population has exploded in the past 20-30 years will be able to recover from this. Future Mr. Klein interrupting the video again because at the beginning I said I was going to explain why the spillway wasn't open in 2019. So he, let's go with this. As you saw in the video, it's pretty much explained that Morganza is only open pretty much in an emergency circumstances as like, you know, a really important step. After all, it's only been open twice and Bonnet Carey has been open like 16 times whether it's over his history. The decisions made by the Army Corps of Engineers whether they open the Morganza spillway or not are actually based on some baseline 
underlying data. And it involves a mathematical concept that we call hysteresis. So you might be looking at this river stage and see that the Mississippi River is at 61 feet and it's gonna move up to 62 feet and stay there. And you might be thinking, why don't they open it? Well, one of the reasons given that they might have opened it by the Corps of Engineers in the press release earlier this afternoon where they said it was gonna be indefinitely open was that they were concerned about the height up at Morganza, which if you saw in the video, it was pretty high. But the reasoning behind the normal decision whether to open it or not has to do with the concept of hysteresis and the relationship between a river's height and a river's flow with it. Okay, so the main trigger for opening the Morganza Spillway is 57 and a half feet at a river stage, and then a peak flow of 1.5 million cubic feet per second. Once those river conditions are there, then it's open. The issue though is that just because you look at the height of the river, that doesn't mean that it, they need to open the gate. Essentially what happens in a hysteresis loop, and a hysteresis loop is essentially a value that is dependent on what's happening in the past and what's happening in the future. So as you can look at this graph right here, what you'll see is that the height of the river is correlated as it moves upward to a crest. And that top point is the highest that the water is going to flow in this particular wave of water fuel coming down the river. So that's whenever they talk about river cresting. So as you can see, there's a relationship between the flow of the water and the height of the river. However, once the crest is passed, it goes back in a backwards direction. So in other words, the flow of water will lessen as the level of the river goes down. So just because you look at the height doesn't mean that it's really in danger. It could be waning. And that's kind of what they're seeing at this point in time. That's also why in the press release that they said that they are not not going to open the spillway, but rather open it and uh, keep it closed indefinitely because there might be a crest of water coming down later on that according to their calculations meets those calculations and they have to open it. So that's essentially the long and short of it why that they didn't open the Morganza spillway. So I'll leave it to Mr. Klein in the past to wrap up the video here. So uh, you go ahead and continue. So there you go. This is a summary of the Morganza spillway. We talked about the history of it, its construction, its operation, and the impact it's going to have on the people and wildlife in the Atchafalaya Basin. This is the second in a series of videos I'm doing on the Lower Mississippi River in south of Old River and its impact on the state of Louisiana. In our next video, we're going to do a bit of a history lesson about the Mississippi and the Atchafalaya Rivers and how people like Henry Shreve in an effort to make the rivers more navigable in order to increase economic output may have made changes that without which we might not even be having to discuss the Morganza spillway or any of this. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. And also, if you're interested in watching more content like this, make sure you click on not only the subscribe icon, but also the notifications. That's the bell to be informed of when new content comes out. So in addition to these videos on science and history and how they impact the state of Louisiana, I also have a series of videos made specifically for middle school science that's based on not just the Louisiana student standards for science, but also the next generation science standards. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please post them below, and thanks for watching.